Uh, my name is Renuka Mito. I'm the managing editor for Forbes Africa. I think that's a very um, subjective word and it depends, uh, it changes from individual to individual because each person's journey is so different. And for me, assertion can be different on different days. So it's not the same thing each time. It depends on how you have to say you're in a boardroom. When you enter, you should be able to read the room. You should be able to see who's in the room. You have to understand a little bit about the people in the room before you go in. Learn what you have to say. I mean, you have to understand what you're going to say as well. What is the content of what's going to happen uh, in the boardroom that day? And then just lean in. If you have to make a point, and I think one of the things that we women generally don't do is as uh, you know, as is popularly known, we don't really lean in. You know, we don't assert ourselves. I think it's the part of the conditioning that we've had where you think that uh, being assertive is being aggressive. There's this negative connotation often to the word assertive. You know what they say, when a woman is assertive, she's seen as aggressive and she's called a bitch. <laughs> but when a man is assertive and aggressive, he's seen as a boss. So that is, therein lies the, uh, the unfairness of it all, or the so-called stereotype that's built into uh, that word. So what is assertive for a woman is very different for, for a man, yeah? So for me, being assertive is being in a pink, uh, feminine pink suit uh, in a ballroom, digging my heels in and saying what I have to say, and in the nicest way possible. So I think assertion, this negative concept set of assertion that a lot of young people have, I had it too, uh, up until recently, and it's still work in progress, to be honest. And as I said earlier, it all depends on reading the room and understanding the people uh, you're going to be assertive with. Because assertion is a quality that's just not dependent on you. It's also dependent on the person that you're going to be asserting yourself with. What is the quality of that person? Is the person reasonable enough to understand if you put it nicely? Or do you have to dig your heels in and uh, be slightly more aggressive? But for me, that never is the route. Uh, I think, the, the, I, I believe in uh, the middle path. Uh, I believe in Gautam Buddha. Um, and I always feel you need to find common ground with the other party. So try and resolve something positively, right? It has to have that positive resonance. So if there's something that has been told to you that you don't like, maybe you feel dismissed in a boardroom because you've aired an opinion, or maybe there's that fear of being undermined, oh, in front of all of these people, if I say something, will it be out of line? And that's a part of the conditioning that we've had, where we've been told, maybe subconsciously, it's that unconscious bias, uh, as they call it, that, uh, you know, maybe I'll be you know, I'll be uh, dismissed for my idea. I think that is what needs to change. So there's a little bit of confidence that should come into the picture as well when you're assertive. But it's again, as I said earlier, it's about bringing that balance where you hit the sweet spot and you, uh, the sweet spot is between being nice and being firm at the same time. So it's being passive, uh, it's being, it, it's about being passive but at the same time you 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 bring something across that is slightly uh, aggressive and impactful so i think you've got to derive your own balance i think that's what i'm trying to say and it, it you really can't uh, uh, you know put it down to being uh, bullying or being bullied or being seen as a bully or being pushy it's about you finding that perfect balance and saying it in the nicest possible way if you have to and understanding that the person who's going to be, uh, who's in front of you, is also reasonable enough to understand why you have to be assertive. Sorry, that's a very long answer. The most important aspect of anything for me is communication. Okay, communication is a life skill, just like swimming or, you know, learning or driving, it is a life skill. And I don't think teachers actually teach you that. You know, you, you are, the art of communication, it's an art by itself. And if you look at it, anything that you're doing now, 
whether it's on social media, it could be a Facebook post, it could be a, a you know, a LinkedIn post, it could be, it could be a video that you're putting up on TikTok, it could be an email that you're sending out. Look at the, the basis of the human existence today is communication, right? So how are you going to, if, how are you going to perfect that art of communication? And it boils down to persuasive communication, right? How are you uh, going to use that sender-receiver model? I'm sure you, all of you have studied, uh, you know, the basics of communication. It's, it's a sender and it's a receiver and there's a message, right? There's a, there's a medium that needs to accept and embrace that message. How are you going to use communication to assert yourself and that's what I have learned I think in my own personal experience it's always been about persuading somebody to understand your line of thinking and that can be done either assertively or aggressively it's your choice or it can be done as I said you know uh, in the most uh, impactful way and that is positive uh, in a most positive way and that, that could be by being as nice as possible, as feminine, feminine as possible. I mean, people say that you can't be uh, feminine and assertive at the same time. That's, that, that's not true. As I said, you can be in a pink suit, uh, flaunting your femininity and still being fierce in the boardroom and fierce and being heard in the boardroom. So I guess it's, it all boils down to that, uh, that essential skill that you have and the confidence you bring in using that skill. And it all comes together, it's like a complete package. It's a persuasive communication and the confidence that comes with that persuasive communication because in the end, you will definitely see a positive outcome. Again, you know, every day you face it on many levels. Um, I personally, uh, I've not really I don't face this challenge on a daily basis because I'm very comfortable where I am. Uh, I have a great team uh, to work with. I have great bosses to work with. And everybody understands me. I've been with, you know, in my current position, I've uh, been the, Forbes the managing editor for Forbes Africa since 2018, January. And before that, I was a managing editor, the editor for Forbes Woman Africa. So I think being in a, in a setup for the last, being in a setup for the last eight and a half years, I'm, very comfortable in that space and I've never had to be aggressive or uh, or be assertive enough you know I've always been understood so so I'm in a very comfortable position but it was not always like that in other jobs or I've been in jobs uh, where I felt bullied uh, and especially <laughs> by men you know it's, it's invariably been uh, the toxic masculinity that's thrown at you uh, in your work setting so there I've had to, uh, there have been times when I've had to be assertive. And again, it depends on the person that you have to be assertive with. If the, that, that's the only language that that person understands. Then yes, you've got to be bold and stand up to what you think is right and, and convey it. But again, it has nothing to do with emancipation and empowerment. You look at a, a woman, okay, just picture this African, you know, female uh, farmer standing in the middle of Africa, deep in the, uh, you know, the heart of the Central African Republic, where she's using the hoe to tend to her land and under the African sun. She is assertive in the position that she's in. She's very sure of her land. She's very sure of the foundation that she's standing on and she will stand up to it. What does it have to do with education? What does it have to do with emancipation and empowerment? So it's in believing what you think is your truth, what you think is your story. And once you believe in that, the confidence will come and you'll be able to assert yourself. I mean, I must say, you know, that one of the, I talked about Gautam Buddha and the, and the middle ground. You know, one the greatest example of assertion, positive assertion is Gandhiji. Think of the Satyagraha movement, you know, it's, it's the greatest form of non-violence. He still got his messages across. And how did he do it? Bare feet, and you know, uh, he got he got his message across to the most powerful people on the planet at the time. Nelson Mandela. How did he do it? Came out of prison for 27 years. He was in prison, away from his family and his people. 1994, when you know South Africa, just before it became obviously it was under the in the white rule and apartheid was still in force. And in 1994. When he was released uh, in 1990, what did he do? He extended 
uh, his hand and he he told the ruling government that I'm here and you know let's just shake hands and let's move on. Did he hold it against them? Did he you know was there a revolution or a, a rebellion after that? And South Africa gained this, got its democracy in 1994. So that's assertion. That's positive assertion. So I think. Uh, the positive aspect of being assert assertive should be brought into account in every daily uh, interaction, whether it is with your family or your husband or your employer or even with your pet. You know, where you, you say, no, that's not going to happen. That's being assertive. But, uh, but you have to say it. How you say it is the part of the communication that kicks in, the communication skill that kicks in. I have. There are so many to name. <laughs> you know, I've been in this profession for the last 23 years and journalism is not an easy profession to be in for any woman. Um, you know, when I started out in the 90s, when I studied in the 90s back then, yeah, I I'm really am a di dinosaur. Um, I, you know, there were very few women in the profession, right? And, and working uh, journalists. So we used to encounter it every day. You know, it was a male-dominated uh, profession back in the day in the 90s. And now it's changed completely. Those roles have reversed. There are more female journalists than male journalists in countries like India. And in South Africa, if you look at my team, there's more female journalists. Uh, it's not because I, you know, in, intentionally or deliberately wanted to keep female journalists. It's just that they're better at the job. So you get the better professional. So I have encountered several of these uh, instances where I felt, um, uh, you know, undermined seriously, or uh, you know, where I, I was, I felt like I could have been treated with more respect. And I think every individual, no matter their income group or their level of education, they go through that phase of feeling, uh, you know, in their life on the, the, the journey, the, the, the journey of their professions. But I think it, again, it boils down the, to the perception of power that we have in our own minds. Or the preconceived baggage or the preconceived shackles that we have in our own minds. A lot of the time, at least I've realized in my experiences, I'm my worst enemy. You know, I am my worst enemy. If I have to do something that, that goes above and beyond my daily brief or if I feel um, is not in, I'm, I'm not in, it's not my place to do uh, something. I think there's a certain of a perception of power that comes with it, where I'm thinking he is more powerful than me. And usually it's a man, you know, in that position where, you know, you feel kind of uh, undermined always. And especially, you know, I'm talking about back in the day when it was more male dominated and the so-called aspect of male feminism hadn't emerged at all. Now you find a lot of men who are in the journey together with us. They're not leading the conversation, they're letting, letting us lead and they're holding our hands or they're walking behind, but they are supporting us. But back in the day, it was never, this, uh, never the case. You know, I, I was myself told by my professor, and this I've mentioned in Curtin University before, is, and he became my mentor, by the way. He said, well, you got girls are just gonna, you know, why do you need to do journalism? You know, you're just gonna end up in the kitchen. Uh, so why do you need to do it? And I stood up and I said, ah, that's, a, that's the one example of assertion that I can give you. It just came naturally to me. And this was on day one of journalism class. It was just four girls and I think about 20 guys. And he said, you girls shouldn't even bother to study. You know, um, this was for the master's program in Kerala at the time. And uh, so I don't know what it is that made me stand up instinctively. Uh, I was just so young um, and I, you know, I didn't really think that I had the so-called feminist in me. I just got up and I said, Professor, you know, I don't mean to be rude, but can I say something? And this is again one aspect of persuasive communication. Communication is also an example of that. I could have easily gotten up and been confrontational. Instead of that, I just got up and I said, Professor, is it okay if I can, I, I don't mean to speak out of line, but can I just say something if you don't mind? And he said, yes, go for it. And I said, you know, what you just said, uh, that we'll end up in the kitchen, uh, I'm sure we'll be able to prove to you otherwise, and you're going to eat your own words. So I'm going to prove to you that I can do both. 
and uh, two years after the master's program and uh, I had gone on to work in the Indian Express and with India Today in Delhi and he called me up and he said you took me too seriously Renuka but I am so proud of you. But I am grateful to the men who provoked me. I am very grateful to them. It's not the other way around. I don't hate the male, uh, the men who challenged me. I actually am so grateful to them that they challenged me when they did. Because I was able to prove them wrong. <laughs> it's a, it's not a, you know, it's a term that somebody came up with and we're all using it. It's come into uh, popular parlance. It's, it's, it's so much, it's become a part of this pop culture. Every time you talk about feminism, you talk about the glass ceiling. And in many ways, just like the word assertion and feminism and glass ceiling, I've begun to think that all of these are so cliched and there's so many negative connotations about them, right? You know, woman has to break the glass ceiling. Uh, it's become quite cliched, but I know why it is important to still talk about it. Um, I think it's like looking at the glass, half full or half empty, right? It's the same thing with the glass ceiling, in my mind. Look at the bright side, there is something outside that, right? And we can see it. It's not wood, it cannot be broken. It's not that it can't be broken. It's not wood or cement, it's still glass. So look at the bright side there, it can be broken, A, and there is light on the other side, B. Right? For me, more than the glass ceiling, it is a step that comes after that. And what is that step? Is standing on the shattered glass and still making it. So once a, you talk about the ceiling, breaking the glass ceiling, once you break it, it's still there. You're standing on it. What happens next is what's most important, the most important part of the journey. Uh, I think I think one of the things that at least my generation didn't get enough of, I'm sure a lot of young people uh, get that now, uh, and I hear that word used a lot more, is mentorship. You know, I don't think in uh, my generation, people, women were actually asked to seek men mentors because I think the only things you were asked to do is get, you know, get a decent, uh, you know, uh, degree and get married, right? Nobody said you should find a mentor and then move on and do this and, you know, find your own business and, you know, found your own business and keep employees, right? Nobody taught us to become entrepreneurs or not just, when I say entrepreneurship, it's not just about starting a business. It's the entrepreneurial thinking. It's the proprietorial thinking to anything you want to do, any field, whether it's journalism or whether it's medicine or, you know, we're always taught to practice it. We never taught to how to build it, right? So I think mentorship is a very important aspect of anybody's life. And think of yourself as deserving or merit worthy to have a mentor. Because a mentor, and it's a very serious relationship to have, because the mentor should be, the mentor should be as serious as the mentee and, and the other way around, because it's a lot of give and take. And this perception that a woman can only have a female mentor is also wrong. You know, because as I said, this is the age where you have a lot of male gender activists and who don't, probably don't want to be called as male gender activists, but they have, they no longer have that unconscious bias that a woman is inferior or a woman cannot be your partner uh, in business or a woman can't be your boss. There are some certified uh, uh, good men out there, seek their help, seek the women as mentors, also men, men also because they, uh, you know, historically have uh, uh, the bigger networks because they've started much before us and, you know, the so-called boys club and all of that, you need to be able to, you know, go through that, the smoky uh, boys club and still, uh, you know, make it happen, take advantage of the connections that they have. You know, use those connections for your own, uh, use it to your advantage. Use the networking, the connections, uh, the skills that they have and 
try and use it, uh, use their guidance to go forward in uh, your career or your sector. So, so I think that's something that uh, not many young women even know about, uh, to be honest, you know, that you can actually find uh, a guide, you know, what you call the friend, philosopher and guide. It's a very real thing. And it could be somebody you're working with, uh, it could be somebody, uh, you know, in the home setup. Um, like I've been very grateful that I've had male mentors all my life. Uh, uh, I've not gone seeking them, but I, I've always been blessed, whether it's my dad or my husband or my, my, my boss, you know, I've always been blessed with having uh, male mentors. And in so many ways, they influence you positively. And you need to be, allow yourself to be influenced as well. And that's the beauty of, of mentorship, uh, that we, a lot of young people don't really understand the significance of.